We're going to talk a little bit now about the relationship between the position of an object, its velocity, and its acceleration. If this is as a graph of the position of an object, and it could be really any shape, but I'm just going to try some example right now. The position tells us where something is located at any instant in time, but it doesn't tell us what it's doing. And we have to go a little bit further to, to ascertain what its trend is. We've talked about previously about the idea of an average velocity. One which has a certain delta x in a delta t. And we've also talked a little bit about an instantaneous velocity. That is, the speed or the velocity at a given instant in time. And that's represented by a tangent line to the graph at a particular time. So this, the velocity at this time right here, I can find by drawing a little tangent line at that time. And the, value, the slope of that tangent line equals the value for the velocity. And that's because the instantaneous velocity is defined as the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta x over delta t, or it's dx dt, the derivative. Oops. So since the slope of this line is right here, a positive number, then the, the velocity at that time would be a positive number. It looks like all throughout this region, the graph is, is constant. So the, I expect the velocity to be zero all throughout here. And in fact, that's more or less what the velocity versus time would look like. It's large and positive all throughout this region. It's starting to decrease in this region right here, where there's a, it's humping over, and then it becomes zero all throughout here, and then it's starting to increase, so it's increasing. And then all throughout here, it's positive again. So this might be a reasonable representation. Just as the velocity is defined as the derivative of position versus time, the acceleration is defined as the de derivative of velocity versus time. So whenever we see the velocity changing, that's when we know the acceleration is, is there as well. And so let's look at this uh, just a moment now. In this region, the velocity is large, but it's not changing. So in this region, acceleration is actually zero, even though the velocity is large. In this region, also the acceleration is zero. And it's not because the velocity is zero, it's because the velocity is not changing. In this region, the velocity is large and positive again, but it's not changing. It's more or less constant. So in this region, the over here, acceleration is equal to zero. It's only in two regions where the velocity is changing that the acceleration is different from zero. And so if we look at that graph again, in this region, since velocity is decreasing, that represents an area where the acceleration is less than zero. In this region, since the velocity is increasing, That represents an area where the acceleration is greater than zero. So if we were to graph acceleration, it would look something like this. It would be zero. It would ramp down to a negative number. Then 
be negative zero again. We ramp up to a positive number, and then continue on being zero. So these two blips, this one and this one, correspond to these two regions right here and right here. 